Hello and welcome to Faith with Flavor. On today's show, we are going to shed light on women in business. More and more in society, we are seeing females take on not just the household role, but also the business role. Today, we are going to meet a female entrepreneur who happens to also be a human rights activist. She also is here to share about her organization called Girls Pact, which was created to combat unplanned pregnancy. But first, I recently attended Embrace You Women's Conference where I got to meet a bunch of lovely ladies that shared with us about their experience. I can do anything. I can reach any goal today. I can do what I want. I can be what I want to be. Embrace Conference is a women's conference brought to you by The Rock Church Riverside. This conference is to empower women of all ages to be the you that God created you to be. I love it. I love it. I love to be involved in God's house and um, I'm single so it's, it helps me stay connected and keep focused on God and not be distracted by the things of this world. Freedom of, you know, of shame, freedom of, you know, things that I've done or things that were done to me that I couldn't let go. Now, I gave them to God, left them, so free. This year's conference included speakers Heather Flores from The Rock Church, Nicole Forbes, and Tamala Kelly. This conference also included a full one-hour concert performance by Blanca, a full comedy experience from comedian Carrie Pomolari. Women coming together is vital for spiritual growth, and this conference touched on issues with self-image and how women see themselves. At the end of the event, many women left feeling encouraged, refreshed, and empowered to live out the calling that God has for their lives. I know when I prayed and I talked to God and I told him I was gonna leave everything that I went through. Sorry, and that locket. So it's just a reminder that I'm free from it. I would like to just take this time to thank Pastor Heather Flores for having TBN Salsa at their women's conference. It was truly an honor to be there. And now without further ado, today's guest is Rachel Chanel Adams, who is a female entrepreneur and board member for Girls Pact. Rachel, welcome to Faith of Flavor. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. It's such an honor. You know, I love seeing women in, you know, business roles and just making yeah. a difference in the world. But let's touch a little bit about your testimony and how you came to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Okay, um, so I was actually raised Catholic. Um, okay. My mom made sure that we went to like CCE and those type of activities because my dad is one of 18 children and she wanted us to be connected to his family and they're really big in their Catholic church. So before my mom even got saved, we attended Catholic church and then she got saved and um, she's never been like really religious or anything. She's just really in her Bible. Mm -hmm. So she used to make us sit down and do Bible studies almost daily. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, we can do really anything that we wanted to do. And even if we had like a big group of people spending the night, she'll make all of us, my cousins, my friends, everyone sit down and do the Bible study. And then um, sometimes nine and 10 hours. Wow. Yeah, and then like <laughs> after that, we can go and play until like three, four o'clock in the morning. Aww. So it's just always been really open, but a lot of discussion about God and you know the Bible. So it's rooted in me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where my connection comes from. Awesome, yeah. that's so beautiful. Thank you. So you kind of grew up just knowing about the Lord and, and really, you know, just knowing Him your whole life. Yes, I did. And it, it just shows that the Bible is so true. You know, it says, if you sit your children down daily and discuss with Him, when they grow up, they won't depart from the Amen. Word. So it's just like, you know, I really got to see a lot of the words in the Bible reign true in my life for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's talk about what you do. You work in the entertainment industry. Yes. Tell us about it. I love it. I love working in the entertainment industry. I actually have a bachelor's in consumer science and fashion merchandise. So it's not like what I went to school for or what I aspired to do. Um, and my brother, he was really successful in the music industry. Mm -hmm. So when I was in college, that's kind of how I got into it. I used to help him out every so often. But um, I love it. I love that it's challenging and fun at the same time. 
Uh, I love that it's unpredictable at times. I like the spontaneity of it all, you know. And I really am just a, a person I like to work, kind of like all day. Like, I like being busy. Oh, okay. I like hate idle time. So mm. the entertainment industry is 24 hours a day. You know, you have to be alert and you have to keep working in order to be successful in it. Mm. What is the funnest thing about what you do? Uh, so, yeah, the funnest thing is that I get to stay busy all day and I get to travel with it. Um, meet people all across the world um, doing very interesting things with the entertainment industry. Um, that's probably my biggest thing is the travel aspect of it. Yeah. Give me an example of like your day-to-day. -day. What does your day-to-day -day look like? So because I do like activism as well with working, my day-to-day -day is just like balancing it all out and going between the different areas. Um, working, I get up and I work on something for complex entertainment. Um, maybe schedule some events or go check on a, on a site or an event that's going on in the, in the area. And then I usually meet up with different people in my organization and if we have events I go and interact with uh, the different people that we serve and um, then after all of that I go home at night because we have a lot of business partners in other areas of the world so I have a lot of Skype calls and I have a lot of late night conferences with people in Indonesia and Australia so yeah it's always busy and jam-packed with different things to do. That's awesome. Yeah. It sounds like you have a really powerful job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So tell me what kind of advice can you give women who maybe are aspiring to be in business or maybe are in business to be successful? Uh, to be successful, I think as a woman, uh, the main thing is to focus on yourself and on what your goal is in the business industry and don't try to, um, it's okay to be inspired or encouraged by other people, but don't try to copy someone else's path because I think everyone has their own path and own place and stand firm in wherever that is, whatever was placed in your heart to do. Um, it's kind of like David, like the oil was only for him. Even if his brothers might have been stronger or older, what was for David, King David, was for David. And I think that applies to in business or in life in general. What's for you is for you, and uh, don't let anyone tell you different. It might be a time where someone tries to put like a patriarchal viewpoint on you where like this is a job for a man type of, you know, women can't do this or women shouldn't be doing that. But I feel if... God placed that in your heart to do, then you should definitely do it, you know, and don't let anyone tell you different. Yeah, and you know, like the Bible says, there's no Jew nor Greek, exactly. nor male or female, exactly. we're all the same in and equal. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we have to believe that. That's so good. Tell me what your business philosophy is as a Christian woman. So for me as a Christian, um, I just want to make sure that I'm portraying that in myself. So like my biggest thing, like the biggest regimen that I do, I pray without ceasing. I pray over everything I do, Aww. every phone call, when I press send on the email in Jesus name, like I just want to make sure that everything I do is blessed. Mm. But also you have to make sure that you're not, especially as a business owner or a leader, make sure you're not imposing that on someone else mm. and better yet, just show it to them through what you do. Don't make it like a mandate if it's not a Christian based organization or business, but make sure that everyone knows that this is what you stand in and this is what you believe. Exactly, because, yeah. you know, our lives are the best example. Exactly. The best testimony that we can share with exactly. anybody is just how we live our lives. How do you live your life? So, I, like I said, I live my life uh, rooted and grounded in the Word of God. Um, I, I couldn't function without it. And I advise anyone to uh, make sure that they read the Word of God as much as possible because I know that it's my guiding light on how I conduct every aspect of my life. You know, my friends talk about it all the time. Sometimes I talk and I use a Bible scripture to explain how I feel. You know, you have to be grounded in something, I think. That's so mm -hmm. good. And you're also here because you are a human rights activist. Right. And tell me when that love for, for human rights began in your life. So I always had a love just for helping people out and, you know, if I know you, if I don't know you, if I can help of some way or be of some assistance, I will. And then when I went to college, that's really when I realized, okay, this can go further. It's not just helping a one-on-one -on -one person. You can really do this everywhere you go, all over the world in every aspect. So that's how I became to understand the power of advocacy. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was the publicity chairperson for the NAACP at my college and 
I led a bunch of other organizations. So just getting out in the community and helping people out on a larger scale is really like impactful to me and I really enjoy doing that. And you also went to Peru. Yeah. Tell me how that trip to Peru changed you. So I went to Peru last year in November for the entire month. Um, and I think that people, everyone, I think it's really important for everyone to be able to get out of their comfort zone. And that's basically what I did when I went to Peru, it was out of my comfort zone. It was in a rural area. Um, I speak very limited Spanish and the area that I am, education is not like it is here. So it's not like, you know, you go to a neighboring city in Mexico and most of the people speak English and Spanish. So you can navigate. Yeah. There, you know, everyone speaks Spanish, but it was amazing to me how, regardless of the language barrier, how similar everything still was, how the human connection still was even to people that we couldn't communicate, but we actually liked each other, had an affinity for each other, and can help make a real big difference in the Sacred Valley. Mm, that's so good. Yeah. Wow. Now, you also have a nonprofit. Yes, I'm on the board. Of, you're you're yeah, on the board uh -huh. for um, Girls Pact. Tell right. me about Girls Pact and the mission for So Girls Pact is a nonprofit organization in Los Angeles area, uh, and we strive to combat unplanned teenage pregnancies. So we do that through um, holistic services. We mentor, we help um, the girls with college and making those type of de uh, decisions like careers and different things like that. But the most important thing is to help them understand their self-worth. And once you have understand your self-worth, you make decisions for yourself, not based on what someone else is imposing on you. So we don't actually dictate what the girls' decisions are on their steps to make sure that they don't get pregnant. But it's to let them know, hey, you can say no, and to educate them on um, safe sex, or the only real thing for safe se sex is abstinence, but it's still all their decision to decide what is best for me in my life right now. That's so good, and how did you get involved with that? So um, I heard about Girls Pact through one of my employees, <laughs> and yeah, they told me about it, because I just moved here from Houston okay. about two years ago. So, and I was really uh, involved with my community there. So I just wanted to make sure that I can still be involved anywhere that I go. Mm -hmm. And I went to an event that they had, and it was really amazing. Um, all the women on the board are amazing women doing something special in each areas of their own life and own business. So I joined as a board member and I've been involved for about two years now. That's so uh, awesome. Well, now we're gonna go ahead and give you guys an exclusive look into Girls Pact. Watch this. Hi, I'm Rachel Chanel Adams and I'm an executive at Complex Entertainment. I've always been passionate about making a difference in people's lives. What better way to make an impact than through television, film, music, and life-changing events? My affinity for making a difference in the world has led me to advocate for human rights as a personal outreach effort. I'm on the board of Girls Pact, a nonprofit organization in the Los Angeles area that aims to combat unplanned teenage pregnancies. My name is Michelle Shagda, and I'm the founder and president of Girls Pact. So she acts like she really tries to like hold on tight to me, make sure I don't do anything. Like she's always all in my phone, and she's just like I feel like I don't want to talk about like sex with her because it is I don't feel comfortable talking with her about that because I feel like she's gonna think that that's what I want to do, and I feel like I should be able to make my own decision if that's not like I don't even think about. So I think about it, but I know that I don't want to do it, so I'm very, so I don't even need her to walk me anymore because I'm getting older and I know right from wrong. And the more I talk to them, the more I learn that girls weren't getting pregnant because they didn't know birth control was available or they didn't know that they could choose abstinence. It was their insecurities made the choices for them and their insecurities just really got in the way of them. Um, it, it's hard to compete with those insecurities when you think somebody's going to leave you if you don't sleep with them or all your friends are doing it so to fit in you know you must be cool and do it as well or you know maybe you're just curious or maybe you're um, 
not liking yourself and you're abusing drugs or alcohol that puts you in situations that doesn't make you have the right choices. And so, you know, in the internet age, the girls are, they know that birth control is available. They're very aware of their options. But it, it's this insecurity, all this stuff that tends to, to get in our way and, and kind of cloud what our vision is and our choices and our directions. So Girls Pack took all of that and figured out a way to put it all together and, and that's why we're very proud of our comprehensive sexual health education. We really do talk about sexual health. We really talk about our own personal values and what we want in a relationship. And is this a healthy relationship for me? And what do I stand for in this relationship? And the boundaries that we have in this relationship. And so we're learning to really make those decisions for us. Support our future. <laughs> If you just started tuning into the show, that was an exclusive look into Girls Pact, a nonprofit organization helping to prevent unplanned pregnancies. That was such a powerful video about Girls Pact. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that no with problem. us. Now, so tell me, why are programs like this so critical, especially in like, you know, LA? Yeah. Why are they so critical? So this type of program is actually a major void for it that girls pact is fulfilling you know one out of four girls will get pregnant by the age of 20 and those type of staggering statistics are what we aim to combat girls pact has been 100 percent successful with this cohort of girls uh, and we take guys too so girls and guys um, okay. it takes two to have a baby so we yeah. want to make sure we incorporate everyone mm -hmm. and um i also think that the statistics within the last 10 years have decreased, and I think that's due to education. People are educated on how to have, well, not how to have safe sex, but exactly what safe sex means, you know, and that there really is no other way to 100% prevent yourself from getting pregnant but abstinence. So um, Girls Pact helps educate the girls in our community to know what is right for them and to build up their self-esteem. Yeah, I, I definitely do agree with you because, you know, education is the only thing that's going to stop somebody from doing something exactly. that they know is wrong, right. you know, because they have been educated. I mean, I think back to my years, you know, when I was in elementary school mm -hmm. and I remember we had this this program called D.A.R.E., right. you know, and it taught all about the effects of drugs mm -hmm. and, you know, because of that, you know, before, of course, you know, knowing about the Lord and, you know, what he teaches in his Bible, but... Right. But just knowing the fact that, you know, this was going to harm me, it made me think, like, I don't want to do this. Exactly. You know, why, why would I want to harm my body with these, you know, chemicals and exactly. horrible things? But it's because I was educated. So tell me how Girls Pact educates women when it comes to, like, being, you know, pure. Because I believe in purity so yes. much. Purity is so important. Right. So in Girls Pact, we explore all of those type of topics that such as purity okay. but we really want to make sure that the girls understand their self-value and self-worth because so low self-esteem has been attributed to one of the top reasons why uh, young women get pregnant unplanned um, and so we want to just make sure that they have the choice and they know they have the choice they know they can stand up for what they believe in and make decisions about their own body without having to be influenced by some external factor now I'm sure you know of course you have women who come into the program that yeah. maybe are not you know maybe they are in a in a relationship mm -hmm. or what whatever the case may be how right. do, what do you teach them about that like you know if they are like how do you how do you school them so if they are already in some type of relationship or even if um, they might be pregnant. We just make sure that we offer them as much support as possible. We're like a home away from home. So we can guide them, we can connect them with a mentor, we can help them uh, succeed. Most of the girls who are uh, pregnant at a young age, they tend to be more impoverished or take a low income job because they can't finish school. So we make sure that we give them, the, help them with those type of resources mm -hmm. to succeed and um, put them on a better path for a good life for each individual person. That's so good. Uh -huh. Take me through the steps. Like, let's just say I'm new to the program and I'm right. walking into your doors. Uh -huh. What is the first thing that happens? And so the first thing that happens is that you will speak with the founder. The founder's name is Michelle Shegda, and okay. she has a really good relationship with each and each individual uh, girl and guy in our program. 
So you'll sit down with her, she'll discuss with you, she'll give you an assessment and see your likes or dislikes, where you may feel like you might be lacking in, and what really external and internal factors are contributing to your current situation. And all the girls are not in a dire situation, or, you know, all, most of the girls are not pregnant or have not already had a child. But um, so we sit down and assess you, and then uh, Michelle will constantly contact them and keep them involved, keep them engaged. We have events that go on um, year round. We have over 100 events a year. So we're just making sure that the girls are constantly engaged in uh, the community and conscious about their life choices. And that's how we keep them and we guide them from high school into college. And now we're actually prepping girls to be able to be more like their own boss. So if a girl wants to, they can take this program and start their own chapter at their college. So, oh, wow. Yeah, and become their own boss? Like Yes, yeah, that's what we call it. Like. The, the workshop that we do is called Like a Boss. So, you know, oh, yeah, cool. you, we're teaching you how to um, start a company or a nonprofit. What, the, wow. what are the tools to do that and help you actually launch that launch Girls Pact at your college, where, no matter where you are. So, That's so awesome. Uh -huh. I want you to do me a favor uh -huh. and look into that camera for me. And maybe there's a girl who's watching or right. a young woman or a woman. Mm -hmm that needs to start over yeah you know when it comes to sexual purity or yeah that would you just encourage sure. them right now any girl and anybody can start over i mean no matter what your situation is we all have to wake up every morning and start over and say to ourselves today i'm going to choose to do something good today i'm going to choose to make a difference in this world and there are days that you're going to fall short we all fall short and we all make mistakes but we know that we're redeemed, that no one is perfect, and that no, no one has to be a, feel a victim or feel like they can't make it. You can make it. Um, a Greek proverb says, to know thyself. I say to know the Lord is to know yourself, because we're all made in the image of his likeness. So stay in your word, read your word, understand what the Lord has for you and what the Lord calls you to be. The Lord calls you to be blessed. You can be blessed. We all have to work at it but you definitely can do it. That's so awesome. Yeah. Well said, Rachel, Thank you. great uh -huh. job. Now, if someone would like to get involved with the program, whether it be you know, to volunteer or maybe mm -hmm. donate, where can they go? Uh, so for Girls Pact, you can go to Girls Pact, so that's G-I-R-L-S, girls, mm -hmm. P-A-C, pact, dot org. And um, you can reach out to us, you can email Michelle, um, her email is michelle at girlspact.org and get more information. We have our events on there. You can come to any event. We welcome people. Most of the events are free and can open I to the public. To yes, you can. <laughs> free and open to the public. We have mentors. You can come mentor our girls and talk to them about your focus and your goals in life. Like we really awesome. like to engage them with so many different opportunities to succeed. So I love that because definitely. you know, like sometimes I think even in the church, it's so hard to find mentorship, yeah. you know, cause you know, either you're in a big church or you know, whatever, but like, it's so important to it have is. a mentor, you know, yeah. someone that can guide you and, and be there for you. And like, I know speaking from personal experience, I mean, I don't know where I would be if it weren't for my mentor. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm the same. Yeah. I had amazing mentors. Now, when you leave this earth, mm -hmm. what do you want to be remembered for? I want to be remembered for each thing that I, I, I pray that I'm able to touch someone in some way and be a light and guide them to Christ. I don't really want to live for myself. Oh, Rachel was so good. No, I hope that when you see me, you see Christ. Mm, that's so, so good. Uh -huh. What's your favorite scripture? Uh, so many. My, <laughs> um, and I, I choose so many ever so often. So I would say my favorite scripture is, I like all of Psalms 27. I consider that's my, my birthday is July 27. So like all of Psalms 27, um, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid of? I like the scriptures that encourage me and build me back up to know that Jesus has my back. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. Well, I just want to pray for Girls Pact right now. Thank and you. Father, we just thank you 
for all the women that you're going to bring into this program. We thank you, Father, that you're touching every single one of them, that as they go into the program, Father, that they are knowing that they have purpose and that they are created in your likeness and in your image, Father. And we just thank you for blessing this this nonprofit and for just bringing people from the north, south, the east, and the west, Lord, to just bless them, Lord, and, and multiply them and, and make them expand. And we just thank you for every girl and guy that comes yeah. in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're yeah. so welcome. Okay, my last question for okay. you. You know, I love that you're a woman entrepreneur uh -huh. and it's such a great calling to have. Thank you. What is it about being a woman entrepreneur that makes you feel empowered? I think I'm empowered by being able to break barriers, like any barrier. I've been, um, like I said before, someone might make you feel like uh, this job is for a man, you know. I deal with that a lot, especially in the entertainment behind how, the scenes. How do you deal with that? Because, I mean, that's something that's so common. I mean, you still have those those barriers yeah. that are put you, on. You definitely have to have the faith to know that what you're saying not to do, you're going to do it. No matter what anyone says, anyone does, you're going to make it and you're going to be successful in that. That's so yeah. good. That's a good word to have. Thank you. And with that, thank you so much for being yeah. on Faith with Labor. It was such an honor to have you. Thank you. And thank you at home for watching. I'm so excited that you tuned in. And if this program has blessed you in any way, please email me your comments, your questions. You can visit my website, lifewithdonna.com. And just remember, you know, that you can do anything, like she said, that you set your mind to do. If you continue to give God his rightful place in your life, which is number one, always, always remember to put him first. And no matter where you come from or what you've done, there is still purpose inside of you. If there is breath inside of your lungs, that means that God is not done with you. That means that there is more inside of you than you can even imagine. And if you give your dreams, to him, I promise you that he will make them happen. Just like Faith is Labor. I mean, this is a dream come true for me. He can do it for you too. So God bless you and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.